The drive out to the pig farm was pleasant. Abundant sun with temperatures in the low 70s made for a lovely ride. A long gravel road ran adjacent to the cow pasture that led to our destination, ending near a neat two-story farmhouse. Amos brought the Cadillac to rest on the grass between the house and a freshly painted barn. A large area in front of the barn was home to numerous hogs, slogging about in the muddy terrain inside a fence. I looked around and frowned. Dang, I said. I hope we didn't make this trip for nothing, Amos. I don't see hide nor hair of Joe's truck. It's usually parked next to the barn. Amos peered at me in the rearview mirror and twisted his mouth into a thoughtful expression. Then my eye caught movement to the right. It was a sight to behold. Mary Kate Watkins, dressed in denim overalls and a clean white tank top, strolled across the grassy area between the barn and the house. She carried a big steel pail in each hand, apparently heading to the well situated between the two structures. I licked my lips. It had been two years since I'd last seen her, and she had been quite stunning back then. If possible, she was even more stunning now. She stopped in mid-stride, cocked her head at us, and then proceeded to set the pails on the ground. Amos climbed from the car and opened my door. I slid out and faced the young woman who was now skipping down a little slope toward us. When she got close enough to recognize me, a big smile spread across her face as she waved in an animated fashion. Well, Miss Kitty, she drawled, I ain't seen you in a month of Sundays. She stopped a few feet from me and I took her in. Well, well, Mary Kate, I said, you've gotten prettier than a store-bought doll. She held her hands up and waved them excitedly before squinting and turning her head to the side in an exaggerated display of appreciation for the flattery I'd served up. Oh, Miss Kitty, hush now, she squealed, now hugging herself with nicely toned arms, a sprinkling of light freckles covering her sinewy and sun-kissed limbs. So, Mary Kate, where's your daddy? She made a little wave of her hands. He's gone for most of the day, Miss Kitty. He had to help Uncle Bubba build a few deer stands in the woods over Warner Robin's way. I expect he won't be back till sundown. What brings you to our neck of the woods? The news of her being left all alone on the farm, along with her piercing blue eyes gazing into mine, had temporarily put my mission to procure a ham for dinner on hold. I took her in. Thin but shapely, with small perky tits poking against the material of her tank top, Mary Kate had rendered me momentarily flummoxed. And while overalls may not have been considered the sexiest apparel in the world, she made it a close call. The somewhat baggy attire didn't completely obscure what lay within. Long, cultish legs, extending from a cute little bottom, had instantly gotten me more than a little hot in the bother. She even managed to make the dusty work boots, partially covered with the hem of her overalls, Looks sexy as all get out. We came to purchase a ham, Mary Kate, I finally managed. Do you think you can handle that transaction in your daddy's absence? I expect I can, Miss Kitty. Come on in the house and I'll get one ready for you. She smiled prettily and then ran a pink tongue over her perfectly puffy lips before waving me along. I glanced at Amos, who smiled and nodded. My driver gave me a little wink before I turned from his gaze and followed Mary Kate into the house. She led me up wooden steps to a porch with two rockers positioned to the left of the front door. I followed her into the house, watching her cute pigtails bounce and flop as she danced down the hallway, past the front room, and into a large kitchen. The spacious area smelled of hickory and fresh country air. I breathed in the pleasant aroma and smiled. A sturdy butcher block table sat in the middle of the kitchen, pitted and scarred from use. I got a nice seven-pound ham in the cooler, Miss Kitty. You make yourself at home while I round it up. I leaned against the cutting table and waited for Mary Kate to fetch my order. She returned presently, hefting a delicious-looking ham wrapped in a clear bag. Here, Miss Kitty, let's have a look. She opened the bag, allowing me to inspect the ham. As I moved next to her, she subtly inched toward me, so our bodies brushed each other's.
Although I didn't visit the Watkins place often, I had encountered Mary Kate half a dozen times over the years. Our first meeting, when she had barely reached her teens, I had sensed even then an advanced sexuality about her, and the way she looked at me had told me, with almost undeniable clarity, that she was up for mischief, likely sapphic mischief. It had been an unspoken vibe between us during the past six or seven years. But two things had prevented anything coming of it. First, and most importantly, she had been a minor every time I'd seen her in the past. And secondly, her father had always been present when I'd come to purchase their meats. But Mary Kate Watkins and her newball young body had been a gnawing and haunting fantasy for me over the past several years. And now... She was an adult, and her daddy was off building deer stands, not due to return until evening. I reached up and stroked one of her pigtails. You have such pretty red hair, Mary Kate, I said. It's smooth and silky. I like that. She turned toward me, leaving the helm unattended on the big table. Her eyes were half-lidded and her lips slightly parted. She reached up and rubbed the hand I had on her hair, gently moving it to her cheek. Her smooth skin was as creamy as whipped butter and just as soft, unblemished and warm. Mary Kate caressed her cheek with my hand a few times before moving her paw to her mouth. A shiver shot down my spine when her warm and moist mouth with those full pouty lips kissed my hand. Miss Kitty... Can I tell you a secret? She breathed. What's that, sugar? I whispered. I've always fancied you, you know. You ain't so highfalutin' like them other debutantes who come around. I pulled my hand down and stepped in, kissing her full on the mouth. Mary Kate Watkins kissed me back with hunger, a passionate urgency that could wait no longer. Her mouth on mine felt divine causing the juices to flow in my eager pussy. As I continued kissing her, I reached up and removed the straps from her shoulders, dropping the denim garment to the floor in a heap. I had her out of her tank top in a flash, revealing small breasts with long pink nipples, now standing at full attention. Bending down, I took a stiffened bud into my mouth, sucking her while swirling my tongue over the engorged flesh. Oh, Miss Kitty, what you do to me, she moaned. I grinned as I released her and brought my mouth to her peach of an ear. I nibbled her lobe as I breathed hot breath down her neck. She moaned again and I whispered into her ear, I'm going to kiss your pussy now, country girl, and when I do, you're going to squeal louder than a pig at slaughter. She stepped out of her crumpled overalls, leaving her in her work boots and a pair of white boys' boxers. I yanked the boxers down and left them piled with the overalls. A fiery bush of red pubic hair greeted my gaze, glistening pink, protuberant lips peeking through her thatch. I licked my lips again. You can leave the boots on, I said. Whatever you say, Miss Kitty, she breathed. Make me your little plaything. I turned the girl and popped her fanny lightly, causing her to giggle. Up on the table, young lady, I commanded. I'll have you on all fours. She pushed the ham to the side and climbed onto the butcher block table, placing her ripe, sweet ass in my face. Her pussy, with those curly red hairs flanking rosy lips, looked as delicious as a freshly baked peach cobbler. I dove in, nestling my face between her mouth-watering cheeks. She was clean and fresh, likely having just bathed, but her feminine aroma was thick and heady, just the way I liked it. I devoured the girl, briskly licking through the delicate folds of her labia and a crack of her ass. I nibbled and licked her flesh like a kitten lapping from a saucer of milk. My hands found her taut little fanny, kneading her butt cheeks as I tongued her slick cunt. I continued with bold strokes, licking my way up her wet slit and swirling her pucker rosette aggressively. 
Mary Kate turned her pretty face over her shoulder, grinning like a Cheshire cat. Oh, Miss Kitty, Jiminy Crickets, you make me feel so good. Oh, God, she bellowed, her loud cries ricocheting off the kitchen walls. I rolled her pink pearl between my thumb and index finger as I used my cold tongue to explore her depths. She emitted a shrill squeal when I did, bouncing and bucking like a girl gone wild. When I got my other thumb inside her butthole, she screamed bloody murder. I stayed the course, pounding her hull with my tongue as my fingers continued their assault on her bud. I probed deeper into her asshole, pushing her over the edge. Luckily, the nearest neighbors were miles away because Mary Kate's screams nearly brought the walls down. The country girl, dressed only in her work boots, soaked me with frothy fluid as she orgasmed, shaking and shouting, pounding the sturdy table with her fists. I didn't relent, bringing several more waves of bliss through her tortured quilm before I took mercy. Mary Kate Walken slumped on the table, whimpering like a child lost in the woods, but her fine ass remained in the air. I'm not sure what got into me, but I reached over to the basket of kitchen utensils on the table and snatched a metal spatula. Her butt was practically begging to be smacked. I brought the business in down on her ass, hitting her flush on her right cheek. Her yelp was followed by a giggle, confirming my suspicions about what a freak this girl truly was. I've been a bad girl, Miss Kitty. I need a whooping, she chortled. I brought the spatula down again, and then a third time. Smiling, I stepped back and admired my handiwork. The grids from the utensil had left parallel crimson marks across her sweet ass. Then, something else caught my eye. Reaching out again, I plucked a whisk with a seven-inch grip from the basket. The handle was made of smooth, varnished wood, the perfect implement for my devious plan. Her giggles ceased and were replaced by a gasping intake of air when I inserted the whisk inside her pussy. Oh! Ah! screeched Mary Kate as I plunged inside her delicate kitty. Only a small portion of the handle was visible as the tool stretched her pretty pussy. The tangled metal wires extending from her twat looked deliciously obscene. I left the whisk in place and swatted her again with the spatula. Yeah! she cried, but I didn't give her a chance to say much more. I started working the whisk in and out of her cunt, pounding her roughly with a makeshift dildo. We found a rhythm. She began pushing back, meeting every thrust from me with one of her own. Intermittently, I would smack her hard with the spatula, producing cries of lust from the crazed country girl. Then she stiffened, followed by a manic and uncontrollable shaking fit. Another shrill cry flew from her lips as she submitted to the powerful orgasm rattle in her core. Her juices poured down her inner thighs until they dripped on the scarred and pitted table. I smacked her over and over as she came, further reddening her already crimson bottom. When I finally ceased my assault, I removed the whisk and pushed her over. Mary Kate Watkins lay on her back, starry-eyed and dazed from the exertion. While she recovered, I slipped out of my jeans and blouse, piling my clothes alongside hers until I was completely naked. Climbing onto the table, I gave her a devilish grin. Have you ever eaten a pussy, Mary Kate? I asked. No, ma'am, Miss Kitty, she whispered, eyes still glazed. I straddled her, the golden hairs around my sex only inches above her face. I could feel the dewy production from my overheated cunt coating my labia. Stick that sexy little tongue out, country girl. You're fixing to taste Miss Kitty's delicious pussy. She did as instructed, and I settled upon her, my blonde pubic hair caressing her nose. Kiss my pussy, hun. Lick it like it's cookie dough on a spoon.